Hi everybody and welcome to the texturing portion of the Making E1M1 in Pro Builder tutorial series. So here we're going to take a little bit of a, uh, a different method than we have in previous tutorials in the series and that as you can see here the texturing is all completely done. Uh, this is for two major reasons. Number one, the texturing of an entire level is a really long and tedious process. It took me longer than everything else combined so far. And also because the current, as of this video, as of the creating time here, the UV and texturing methods that we have are being completely rewritten from scratch to be much, much, much better. Um, so there's not, I don't really want to show too much here. It's going to be completely changed within um, several weeks to a month, hopefully. But for those of you still using it right now, this will be a lot of good and useful information. Let's take a quick look at the actual in-game level. Jump in here just for a moment. You can see I've been able to find some very cool textures, uh, actually high-res versions made by awesome artists that are basically recreations of the original Doom textures. And of course there'll be a link to where you can find those and credit as well. So I've kept pretty close to the original Doom uh, look and feel. Right now with a pretty bland lighting going on just so we can see the textures easily and work on them here. Of course we'll do a lot more with that once we get into the lighting tutorial. So lots of texturing going on in this. Fairly simple, of course, since it's a old game. Oops, left the door open there. Probably the most interesting part is going to be this area in here, especially once it's fully light mapped and lit. And that's basically the entire level. So I have it all textured up. We have just one item that I've left. Oops, see if I can sneak under this broken door. There we go. One item I've actually added so that we can use it for a quick test, and that's this silly gigantic bridge that really shouldn't be here. But this will make a good test for us to texture in the level. So you've seen a basic example of what can be done, all of this here. We'll take a look at exactly how to do this with the current, or let's call this the old version of the UV texturing system in ProBuilder. Once again, just want to really stress that we have a brand new version coming together. It'll be our next major update that's going to completely revamp that system. But for now, it still works. Um, and let's see how it, uh, how it comes together here. Now, if we have this bridge and we're wanting to texture it up, a couple things that we'll want to start off with. First, you want to make sure that you have lots of good tiling textures. A great place that I recommend for this is if you go to www.gametextures.com. Huge resource of awesome textures. You can also go to cgtextures.com. So anyway, those two are good options. Just make sure they say they're tileable textures and then they're going to work great with Pro Builder. The second thing is you want to make sure your geometry is set up and ready uh, to work best with the tileable textures. So what this means is instead of unwrapping as you would in a 3D modeling tool where you have um, basically one giant texture and you're moving things around on certain parts of it, it's kind of the opposite in this case. You have many small textures and you're tiling them in different areas on your single mesh. With this you need to break up your mesh in ways that you can basically choose where the textures are going to end up. So in this case, let's look at exactly what I have here. Hit J to enter the texture editing mode. I've decided that with this bridge, I want to have a couple different areas on it with different textures. For example, on the edges here, I want to have sort of an edging texture so I can have a bit of differentiation. Sort of like over here, you see I've added extra geometry, the same as up here, and so forth in various different areas. To have the different texture, there's extra geometry there. This is actually a good example of wasted geometry. I really should have merged those vertices down. So, shame on me there. Back to our bridge. So let's work on adding some textures to this. First thing to do is to open up the texture or material library. You can click on the little circle next to the name of the material and browse through until you find something you like. In this case, I think I'll go with this comp, comp span texture here. Once it's selected, you'll see it in the preview. And you can resize this window if you need to, to see a bit more. And with the face that I want to apply it to. 
In this case, it is these four faces, holding shift to select them. I'll hit apply. So it'll come in, first of all, with the basic default scaling, one meter by one meter. But we want to change this up a bit. First of all, if we look at the texture, you can tell it's actually, I believe, 1024 by 128. I can tell mainly just because I know from, from having opened this texture before, but also that if you look in the preview window here, you can tell it's basically four times taller than it is wide. So it must be 1024 by uh, 128, or an aspect of four to one, or aspect ratio. So we'll want to set the scale to reflect that. So in the X scale, I'll change that to 0.25. So now it's 0.25 by 1. So that's the correct aspect ratio, but it's not fitting in there just right. If we go the other direction, I'll actually make this 0.5 by 2. Now it's going to fit because looking at the prototype tile, this is 1 meter. So I know this is half a meter. So if I set this to 0.5 on the X, it's going to take that out perfectly. We just have to move it over so you can use the handle and drag it over. Now we could go ahead and do that for each and every uh, one of these side pieces, but we don't have to. Just hold control and make sure you have that panel selected and then left click anywhere else and you can paste the exact same UV settings onto the other panel or face that you click on. It's very simple to copy those settings around. Let's add the main texture into the center of the bridge next. So here we have a fairly large surface with some different cuts in the geometry. These side panels didn't have any cuts, so they are very easy to quickly slap a single texture on. However, if we add a texture, in this case, let's go ahead and grab just sort of a brick texture or something like that. Here's one. So if I add that on, you'll notice that the edges aren't lining up perfectly. Obviously, we also need to fix this one up. If we look at it, it's two to one. So I'll just quickly set the Y scale to two and we can work on perfecting that more if we need to. But mainly we're looking at how these edges don't line up perfectly and we really want them to transition seamlessly. So you could edit this by individually moving around each one until they matched perfectly. That would take a very long time and not really be the best way to do it. So instead, just select all the faces that you want to be aligned to each other and click on Group Selected UVs. This will instantly group them all so that they're perfectly aligned. Another feature of this is if you move any one, it moves them all at once. And the same will go for rotation and scale. So I'm going to scale this down just a bit, make it fit a bit better. Unfortunately, that's setting the scale off of exact, so I'll make this 1.5 and 0.75 to make sure that it's set properly. Okay, so moving on to the side of the bridge. In this case, we have lots of different items or polys to select. You can select them all individually or just hold Alt and hit G and it will select them all. Do the same on the other side. So Alt-G will select, it'll grow the selection in a plane, just the same as it does when you are editing geometry. And then we'll choose a texture to add onto this. Go with this plain brick and apply that. Make sure and group the UVs so they all tile across perfectly. And we're going to set the scale a bit differently. Something the same for the inside as well. And then we just need to set the railings. So here we can actually go back to this texture where we had. Don't forget you can type to search in that search box, very handy. Have it selected and just hold Control and Shift and left click to paste it on instantly. So you can quickly add a lot of textures this way. 
Of course, we'll also need to set all the UVs by holding control and left click. And once again, I'd like to make a quick reminder that, again, we're overhauling this entire system to be much simpler. It works for now, but we definitely know it. There's a lot of items that could be more intuitive or uh, more quick and easy to work with. So it looks like all we have left is the bottom of this somewhat ugly bridge. I'm sure you can do better than this than I am right now. And we'll just add on a quick texture to the bottom as well. Let's just select one panel or one face from each area of the bridge here and then use Alt-G to select in a plane. And we'll grab a simple texture to drop on the bottom of this. This should work fine. Apply that. And there we have it. One ugly bridge created, but hopefully that shows a bit of how the texturing can work. And you can apply all of those simple methods to texturing this entire level or whatever it is you might be working on. Obviously, there's a lot to it, and again, we would, uh, or I would have recorded this entire thing, but it took quite a few days, and is mostly just tedious working bit by bit to make sure everything fits perfectly and is all set up. So, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next tutorial.